They don't understand. We don't paskin according to the Talmud. Paskin right. means decide Jewish law. And so no matter how many hundreds of Daf Yomi classes I go to, there are always people going, oh, so what we're reading here in the Talmud from you know, 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, oh, this is what I should go out and immediately start practicing. They don't get, we don't have Paskin from the Talmud. Right. This would be tantamount to this, right? Where we really don't go by the written, mm -hmm. which is like the bones, the skeleton, mm -hmm. the Talmud on its own, right, would be more like wrapping it with the muscles and the, and the, and the, nerves and the blood. Mm -hmm. So you have like everything, but you don't have the skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have the last outer layer to this, right? Yeah. So if you're just looking at the body, but you don't have the skin, you have like this muscle skeleton, you're almost there, but you don't have all the way. You need the skin to go around it, and that is later day, um, after the time that the Talmud was written, which was 2,000 years ago, or 1,200 years ago, there's a lot of things that have happened then, there's a lot of people who who've written more stuff down that... And it's not so much that God's law changes, but the situations to which you apply God's law... No, it's not God's just that. God's law. Well, let Go me make this point okay. and you make your point. It's, true. It's, not just that, it's not that God's law is constantly changing over the centuries. It's, it's that the situation to which you apply God's law is constantly changing. So if you've got a temple, the holy temple in Jerusalem, we have all sorts of laws that are in effect. Uh, but if you don't have the temple, then those laws aren't in effect. So, if you're living in a situation where you're primarily surrounded by Christians and you need to be able to do business with them on an ongoing basis, you're going to have a different application of Jewish law than if you're living in an area where there are very few Christians. Okay. You might. So, so the context, like in some situations, a Jew should not compromise his observance of any law. He should rather die than compromise his observance of any Jewish law. In other situations, you're allowed to compromise your observance of Jewish law to preserve your life for all laws but three. So the context to which you're constantly trying to apply God's law is changing, and that's why you have to look to the great rabbis of the situation where you're in today. So a rabbi in Pico Roberts in Los Angeles may give me very different advice as a convert to Judaism and someone who's a bit shaky in some areas. He may say something completely different to Rabbi Raj, let alone if to someone living in Seattle, That's let alone true. living someone in Jerusalem, let alone someone who's not even observant but lives in Moscow but has you know, shown a little bit of interest in Yiddish guy. So what did you want to say? That's a good point. I, uh, those are actually valid points that you made. I was going to say wow. something else. <laughs> I was going to say something else. You might have something that's a, a one page of, right. of Talmud, right. like you learn it, in one Masechta, right. and it has one conclusion. In a different Masechta, unbeknownst to you, there's a there's something else that it says over there, and it has a conclusion. And if you look at the two conclusions, they don't fit. Right. They seem at face value to contradict each other. So if you follow this one without knowing about this one, you could be going against Jewish law. You need somebody who's learned both and knows how to to put it together. And that's why I say you need the final layer. You need somebody who's learned this entire thing, understands how we apply it. Because on its own, you're going to get lost. Yeah, it's not enough to just have your heart in the right place and to mean well. You need someone who actually knows the Torah. Right. You can't just intuit your way. Like I was at a party Saturday night, so it was all these people from Hollywood, you know, all of them secular. And like this guy was saying, oh, well, the thing I love about Judaism is it's not judgmental about other religions. Like Judaism says, like, you know, Jews do their own thing and then non-Jews do their thing and, you know, we should all live together in peace. I said, well, I understand those are your feelings about Judaism, but that's not what the texts say. The, the texts of Judaism are every bit as intolerant as the texts of Islam or Christianity in, in many ways. Well, like, except we don't run around killing everybody. We, we but, I mean, we did that 3,000 years ago in Canaan. Like we, we were commanded to commit genocide when we went into Canaan and wipe out the inhabit, inhabitants of Canaan. So our, our, our five books of Moses, the Torah, commands, commands the Jews then to commit genocide. And there's plenty in the Jewish religion which says that uh, there are plenty of great rabbis who said that Christianity is idol worship. Okay, but the, the difference between us, let's say, and the Christians and the Islam, which is like the three big mm -hmm. Judeo, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, um, Abrahamic. Yeah, Abrahamic religions, is the other two Right, say you if you don't convert to us, right? Yeah, they yeah, proselytize. Yeah, I'm getting to heaven. 
you, you, you're, 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 you're doomed, and, right. and they'll even go so far as to kill you. Right. You know, the, the, and, and Judaism says we don't really care. We don't, we're not in the conversion business. We're not into, you know, And we have a outreach. breaking news bulletin. Fox, this is a Fox News alert. Conservative majority returns to Canada. What do you think, Rabbi? Are you shaken by that? Are you, are you just absolutely Where'd you get that? Where, where'd you get that? D-Medic comes in with that Fox News alert. Where does it say that? We're at the top of the chat. Conservative <laughs> majority uh, returns to the Canadian they had a I, I, I don't really today. follow Canadian uh, politics. I didn't think so, but do you think the Lakers it, will beat the Mavericks? Uh, th yes. Do you think the, Lakers will repeat as NBA champs? Uh, yes. I've okay. said that for last year. Um, the way I look at Canada, yeah. Canada to me is like, it's like my attic. Yeah, I mean, it's, I know it's up there and there's a lot going on, <laughs> right. but I really don't care. Right. You know, it's like I know there's something up in there, but I don't think about it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like Canada has politics, yeah. you know, and it's like whatever. You know, I, I don't, I don't really understand it, and I don't care. Do you think that Cam Newton's a franchise quarterback, or do you think he's a pretender? Um, whether he's the number one pick in the NFL draft. Yeah. He cheated. I don't like that guy. So do you think he's someone worth building a franchise around? Reggie Bush cheated, and he got a Super Bowl victory, so whatever. I so mean, do you uh, think he's a franchise quarterback? Yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> you know, if, if you cheat, that works in the NFL, doesn't it? <laughs> so Torah cautions parents to moderate their behavior so that they will set a good influence for their children. Even though the rabbi and I have no children, we influence people. All of us influence people, whether we like it or not. We are each role models, so we shouldn't smoke crack and patronize massage parlors. Did you agree with that, Rabbi? Uh, for the most part, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean we understand certain... there are exceptions, like, you know, God's law applies differently in different circumstances. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like really good crack. I mean, yeah. And like, if you know there's a nuclear bomb that's about to, you know, drop on you in ten minutes, and there's no way you can escape, you know, you can spark up. <laughs> yeah, well, I would imagine. <laughs> I just can't see any situation though where patronizing the massage parlor is okay, Rabbi. Well, what if you got a sore shoulder? Yeah, got a sore shoulder. Yeah, neck, neck, neck's being bothered. Yeah, this guy just massaged me for the first fifteen minutes of the show. Then you yeah. tell me I can't imagine the situation. Yeah, oh, I didn't actually massage you though. <laughs> Did you find it happy? Happy? Happy. That was pleasant. Okay. Okay. So happy there growth. are situations where you can patronize massage parlors. But only for medical reasons, not erotic. With no happy ending. No, no, no. No. You've really got to cut that out, folks. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Okay. The priests and the Jew, we're not, we're not merely individuals. We represent can God. We, can we go with the word Kohen? Priest kind of gives me the willies. Well, I want the Goyim to be able to understand, too. Oh, okay. Okay, so the priest, the Kohen, represent God and the people Israel. So we have responsibilities. So even though I want to move to Hawaii and bang Shiksas, this is forbidden to me, even if I don't hurt anyone. Because I have responsibilities. Like a lot of people look to me and say, Levy, the moral leader, like he's my moral hero. He, you know, shows me right from wrong. And if Levy was to go out to Hawaii and bang shiksas, like the whole moral foundations of the universe for a lot of Jews would just be shaken irreparably. Hawaii is a great place. I'd love to move to Hawaii. Hawaii is the only state I would really consider moving if I left California. Yeah. That's very expensive. Yeah, me too, yeah. actually. Very, very yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah, I would love to live there. Very. I'm on the Big Island. It's a little cheaper on the Big Island. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Okay, I was on Maui. I've been to Maui. And it is, it is freaking expensive over there. You know, just it's the whole, everything. It's a standard of living. Not just the crack. No, everything is expensive there. Everything. Some things are five times more money than they are here. Hmm. Seriously. You go to the store, you're going to be paying through the nose for food because they have to schlep it in from America. Oh, I shouldn't say that. From the mainland. Don't get me in trouble. Um, but, uh, you know, and there's really no Jewish community there at all. There's a Chabad. Great, you know. And there's you could go and teach your Ten Commandments of Chabad Jews. You could be a guest lecturer. The problem is it's just too expensive for, like, a whole flock of Jews to move over there. And right. people would rather move to Texas, which is, like, you know, the up-and-coming cheapo place, you know. Right. Okay, go ahead. Next so, time. studying Torah, as exemplified by this week's Torah portion, is not always natural and easy. Remember, as I was writing this, it was a sunny Sunday afternoon. I am a man of great holiness. But when the sun's out and the women are wearing scant clothing, it's hard for me to sit indoors and to read about priests with crushed testes and they need to marry you know, women who haven't been with Goyim. So even I, the moral leader, 
you know, even I struggle with this. So if you too struggle with this, then 